stronger. Mm. It creates patterns. Like and of course, mm. you can link all this to all this knowledge that, uh, that's been held in Freemasonry. I mean, what's the symbol of Freemasonry? The compass and the square, isn't it? There Geometry. You go. Yeah, indeed. You know, you have all this um, talk about the ley lines of the planet. You have the most important buildings. Um, parliaments and churches, they were all built on um, the ley lines, on the power spots. Yep. So this knowledge of geometry is not new. No. <laughs> and it's it's just been hidden, it's just been kept for the privileged few. Yeah, and now it's... You know, you have Paris. I mean, you know, it's very strange, you know, um, monuments that have been built and there's an awful lot of geometry that's been built into architecture. Indeed, yeah. You Absolutely. Know? So I make this um, relevant. I, I feel that I've tried my best to sort of make this relevant so that people who can understand our reality. This understanding of geometry is now becoming very important. Yeah, yeah. And it's finally coming and to light too, the ability to, to people to uh, you know, get the opportunity to to uh, you know, with the internet also, of course, as a fairly recent you know um, uh, media to to uh, to spread this information, and and it's you know a lot of things I guess are are uh, in this kind of converge now where things are coming mm-hmm. together finally, and and of course the work yeah. that you do helps to you know c- carry that along, so to speak. Well, I was amazed because the Russians have have put a lot of information out there. They've translated things into English because they say that the problem that previous civilizations have had is that the secrets were held to just a few people. Yeah, yeah. And they say that um, enlightenment should be for whoever who yeah, wants it. Yeah. And that previous civilizations were destroyed because of that. Hmm. The knowledge was not given out to where it, to to the, to the masses. They were held to just a few people. Yeah. Um, so I, I find this very interesting that the Russians have a total understanding of this. The, the week that my book was released, which was September um, September the 15th, um, 2006, um, September the 11th, <laughs> there was a press release um, from a Russian um, agency that said, the world is facing a spiritual revolution. Mm. And they believe they're going to lead the world. And they've been mil- building massive pyramids um, since I think it was about um, for about 15, 16, 17 years, quite a few years now, they've been hmm. building these huge pyramids. Yeah, yeah. And the biggest ones cost a million dollars each. Oh, my. And they've been doing experiments, and they are just totally convinced about this geometry and the power of the geometry. Hmm. Um, and so I detail the, um, the sort of results that they had, um, and... The, their understanding of the importance of working with geometry to sort of help balance the forces. Hmm. And we're talking, we're going back to how the beginning of this conversation hmm. of the forces coming through from the earth and the and the energies coming through from the cosmos. There's, the energy is coming and it's going into two places. There's energy going into directly into the core of the earth hmm. and then there's energies that sort of been surrounding the earth. Mm-hmm. And those energies have to be in balance, and I explain that. And humans, we are sort of like a focal point. Mm-hmm. Those energies have to be balanced within us. And I actually explain this using, I talk about Tesla's understanding of these forces. Mm-hmm. I talk about the Egyptian understanding of these forces. <laughs> uh, I really go for it. I explain, 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 because <laughs> it's really important. And I, I feel that in the way that I've done this, it will be very enlightening for a lot of people to understand this. Yeah, yeah. You cover a lot of areas in your book. I cover a lot of areas, but it it will help people, and it will help people integrate the knowledge that they've already got as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to return a, a little bit to um, to to the the Russian connection, as it were. Um, do do you know if 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 this is because I, I'm aware also of the some of the pyramid building I remember reading about this a while back uh, mm. uh, that there were building pyramids over there and so forth. Uh, but do you think that they will 
or, or themselves don't say that they're the in, uh, kind of the initiators of this new or, or when you say uh, you know that they will lead uh, maybe you could clarify that a little well, bit it's interesting because I came across some Rudolf Steiner philosophers and they were saying that the Russians are the most balanced people on the planet and if there's going to be any kind of evolutionary cha- um, changes the Russians would be there first <laughs> and I was like oh okay <laughs> I was just amazed because well, obviously I obviously don't know everything <laughs> And there was obviously other information, and so I was hmm. amazed that these philosophers were telling me this. Yeah, yeah, sure. About the Russians themselves. Absolutely. I, I um, have an article up on my, my website now speaking about uh, Eurasia and the coming golden age, basically, that uh, elaborates on this with a... That the Russian population is, you know, is going to spearhead uh, a, a spiritual revolution that is going to cover the entire planet. I guess uh, so. This absolutely, I, I, I'm aware of what you're speaking uh, speaking of, and it's it's very interesting. Who, it's, who knows? it's very interesting that they, you know, this press release came out, and I was just wow. You know, this is on the joyfirepublishing.com website. I, I I was just amazed because it was the same week that my book came out, and I felt like a sort of a, a you know that I was doing something on my own and that I, I believed in this firmly and then I got this tremendous tremendous support. Mm. <laughs> to me I saw it support for what I was doing with my book. Mm. So um the Russians are very interesting. Um they feel the need to share their understanding of um of what's happening. And so I, I was delighted to actually incorporate some of this um with the work of Dr. Valerie Uvaroff. Normally he's um he's been you know, he's known in the UFO UFO community and he mm-hmm. talks about UFOs. Mm. But his other great interest um is um the legacy from ancient civilizations. Mm. And he talks about the Egyptians and the fact that um very often when you see um statues of the Egyptian pharaohs that they've got something in their hands. They have these wands. Mm-hmm. They're called the wands of Horus. They are. They're like cylinders. Mm-hmm. And he explains in his book that you can actually find on the internet the whole book is in, uh, most of it's been translated into English. And he talks about the fact that they understood um, the need for balanced energies. Hmm. Yeah. And that they actually use these cylinders to pick up specific frequencies of um, from the earth specific earth frequencies with the intent to balance the forces within the body. And I compare this to the medical caduceus, the, you know, the medical symbol, you know, with the snake and the staff. Indeed, yeah. And the, the bird's wings. And I explain it in my book, and I say that this represented a balance of forces. And when you have balanced forces within the body, you get perfect health. Hmm. Okay, so it's like this ancient knowledge that's been preserved. Mm. What I do is I explain it technically, and I talk about scalar fields. And I, I go, mm. in, I really go for it. But it's important if you want yeah. to know the information is there. Yeah. And I, I just felt that um, what was happening was that you, in the metaphysical world, you're getting this knowledge, but a lot of these people are very, very intuitive. So they feel that it's right, yeah, yeah. and they know what to do, but they can't explain it. Mm. And so you've got the you've got the scientific types of people that have tremendous understanding, yeah. but to get the whole picture, you have to have a blend of the two. Indeed, yeah. And the best scientists are also quite intuitive themselves. Um, but I felt that what was being what was happening was that intuitives were, you know, there's been. If you go onto the internet, you'll find all this, you know, talk about DNA and, you know, and they're doing all this funny stuff. And I, I was just so frustrated with it. I'm thinking, what's going on? Why are they doing all these things? Mm, yeah. But now mm. I understand. But, and what my job was to actually interpret this so that far more people can understand what's going on mm. and what they need to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's and I, I, yeah. I sort of... I appreciate the fact that there are people who are very intuitive, mm, yeah. but I feel that it's important that people who are more analytical, more mentally orientated, that they can understand these things too. Mm, absolutely, and uh, it's uh, you know f- finally a lot of you know uh, um, s- science and and spiritual uh, areas can you know converge and, and meet up in a in a you know 
at a point and finally we can understand maybe some you know what some of the ancients actually were doing you know with with, with tremendous you know uh, um, even if there were you know technologies as you say you try this yourself together with a with a great pyramid I mean let, let's just kind of uh, and, uh, run things off on that note maybe uh, you know talk a well, little bit more about that the great pyramid mm. I actually believe that I actually focus on the work of uh, you know pyramid researchers and um, specifically, I just need to find a name here. Mm, yeah. Um, specifically, I talk about the work of Christopher Dunn. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And his understanding that the pyramid was built as a machine. Mm. Okay, he mm. talks about the fact there's evidence 